flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your NASCAR sports betting and fantasy football home. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to break down another six-pack of NFL picks, college football picks, and all things football is Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? Hey, Kyle. What's up, man? I hope you're as excited as I am to get into the NFL Week 1, but before we do that, I mean... I. How about my Michigan team, dude? They absolutely knocked the doors off of whoever the hell. I forget they play who they played now. Uh, Colorado State. Colorado State, yeah. uh, I completely glanced over them. I knew that Michigan was going to absolutely destroy them in the first half. Yep. Um, And not to jump the gun here, but like I, they were my most confident pick. I should have just made one bet last week and and a bit have been on them. But yeah, I'm I'm excited for the college football season to get going here. Yeah, week one college football is in the books. Obviously, recap our our picks from last week. This week, we will have a mix. So we could do college, we could do pro, we can do a little bit of both. Um, As you mentioned, you did have Michigan as your best bet, five-unit play. Um, That was a nice play. Uh, I was was on the Michigan over just because when they're at home, they play to score points. Uh, it was pretty wild to see like how inept their offense looked, and yet they were still able to cover that 19 and a half <laughs> points at halftime. And then, and it wasn't uh, even in question, yeah. really. I mean, and they put up a, a nice fitty burger. I was looking, you know, we talked a little bit about their game this week against Hawaii. I want to take the team total over again just because I think they're going to score. But when you're favored by 50 points, it's really hard to kind of get that. Like, are they going to really score 60, 65 against Hawaii? Honestly, I will say I I shopped for the number and I I have yet to find it, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely all in on the Michigan team total over this week. Yep. I like them first half minus thirty one and a half, whatever the hell it is, because Hawaii is not good. Right, and JJ some... McCarthy starting when he came exactly. in, the offense looked much better. And actually, and... Uh, is there a world where Alan Bowman, the QB three, actually looks pretty good and maybe well, helps get so us that's that team total. So that's where, like, I feel like, especially this week, the Michigan team total over is definitely a great play. And then also probably game total over 67 and a half because both of Hawaii's first two games have gone over or close to or gone over this number. And now they're facing a Michigan team with J.J. McCarthy starting, who's probably going to play the first half in full, maybe the first three quarters. And then Bowman's going to come in. And even Michigan's second and third stringers are going to be better than whoever Hawaii is throwing out there. And they're not just going to sit on the ball. They're going to allow these guys to play, especially with it being at home, a night game, prime time at the big house. They're going to put up some points. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that was your big hit from the week. Um, Arizona, San Diego State did oh. not stay under. Um, I thought San Diego State might have a world where the off the field stuff caught up with them. And it sure looked like I did. Uh, I had Arizona plus six Arizona on the money line, both those cash. That was really nice, but Arizona looks decently improved. I'm just going to say it's hard to know if they're good or if San Diego state was suffering from all that part of part of me really wants to go back to them this week. Um, Trying to find the odds, the lineup I'm pulling up the odds right now. Uh, but they have a tasty matchup this week against Mississippi State, where they are at home again, and they are ten and a half or eleven point underdogs. Um, that seems really tempting. I know I, I don't want to overwrite too much of what we saw last week. Um, it's definitely a I, step up in I, competition. I, yeah, yeah, and you know, Pac-12 versus SEC. That just, I mean, we saw what Oregon did when they played Georgia. It's just not a scenario where. Um, you want to be so yes yeah, so that didn't cash and then my Buckeyes um, oh. they figured it out in the second half but they didn't get anywhere near that over um, no. so overall um, a slightly down week for you despite going one and two um, on my card I had Cincinnati plus six and a half at Arkansas I said I really wanted that seven couldn't get it couldn't get it uh, and of course they lose by seven not by six and a half so uh, that was very frustrating, but I did have the Gators come through. Anthony Richardson, uh, not only plus three, but money line, uh, sprinkle, sprinkle, baby. Um, <laughs> really wishing I 
I, I was taking him on the money line. I, well, no, I did. T- yeah, but um, I wanted to bet Anthony Richardson to win the Heisman and it was like 50 or 60 to one. Mm. And I was like, no, because there's too many good quarterbacks. And I don't think Florida at the end of the day. And I still may be right there, but uh, his number is crashed down. It's 2018, depending on where you oh, look. Yeah. So wish I had a little piece of that, but that is OK. And then ULM uh, that first half. I'm glad I went first half and not full game because that. Uh, Texas figured some stuff out in the second half, but they covered the first half and it was 24 to three and they were 23 and a half uh, point underdogs. So uh, shouts to Monroe for covering there. Um, so while I did, uh, I did go two and one good, uh, but unfortunately my best bet lost. So uh, a little bit of a losing week at the, at the betting window, but let's see if we can rebound Brian. We got some stuff figured out. We obviously got some NFL stuff to mix in, but we'll start with the college game and we'll start with your first pick of the week. And that is the Crimson Tide heading to Austin to take on the Texas Longhorns. Uh, Crimson Tide week one bets are so fun. I had first half at full (laughs) game, uh, covered that with ease. Um, What's your thoughts as they head to Austin for a big matchup, but is it really let me just start this off by saying and probably pissing some people off texas is not back folks alabama is going to take them to the woodshed and give them a good old-fashioned beat down this weekend alabama put up 50 plus points with bryce young playing barely a half of football they only gave up i think they gave up less than 200 total yards to utah state um, only seven first downs through the entire game. Texas struggled against UL Monroe pretty much the entire first half. Yep. Um, they were given plenty of short fields, which is the way that they were able to score. I mean, Bijan Robinson is a stud. I mean, this kid is absolutely probably one of the best, if not the best running back in college football. But Quinn Ewers didn't really impress against a poor defensive team of Monroe like I feel like this Alabama squad is really going to show why they are the consensus number one team in the nation this week and laying the three touchdowns with Alabama at minus 110 is just too tasty of a number for people that are thinking oh Texas are going to Austin like Texas is going to get a good taste of what they're going to be facing every week when they finally join the sec so i am more than happy to lay this number yeah i am a little concerned like along the the front line like the offensive line defensive line are they going to be able to block bama you know will anderson coming through are they going to be able to (laughs) get to bryce young and and put pressure on the bama off offense um i think you're on the right side i hope it's a little bit more interesting i'm hoping quinn uh steps up the one thing i will say brian is Nick Saban is one and two in, against his old assistants in his last three games. I mean, both of those are against Curry Smart, but you know we'll leave. That and that's a Georgia of... team who is, has an equal <laughs> we'll, talent. We'll leave that like... fact on the side. It's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just you know something to think about, something to make you scratch your head. Uh, um, no, I think I think that you're on the right side. It's uh, it's big enough where I think they really want people to think about it, but my God. Yeah. I, um, I, I feel like we we've played this game many times before with Alabama and you think the number's too big and yeah. they only come out and they absolutely destroy people. And I think a prime example of that was what you already mentioned about Georgia and what they did to Oregon, who is probably more thought of than Texas coming into this season. And I mean, th- this number's barely bigger. Like yeah. Alabama is head over heels better than Texas. Yep. Uh, we're going to sw- stay in the state of Texas, but we're going to switch to Sunday where the Houston Texans are catching seven and a half points at home against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, this is just simply too many points. Uh, I know what the Colts can be. I know what their potential is. Um, there's so many home dogs this week. I just want to load up on all of them and hope to go like eight and two or seven and three. (laughs) Um, but I think the Texans, especially I was able to find the seven and a half at points bet. I like the seven. I don't want anything less than a full touchdown. Um, you know, I think the Texans can win this game. I think the Texans can win this game and still go two and 15. Um, but I think they have enough pieces. I think Davis Mills, 
can do enough. I think uh, Damian Pierce, they actually have a little bit of a running game. Uh, Rex Burkhead, I, obviously they have Nico Collins. Obviously they still Brandon Cooks. Um, and, and I think the Colts will be good. I really want to see what they look like with Matt Ryan. Like, is he like, I think he should be a, a, a noticeable step up from what Carson Wentz was and what Phillip Rivers was. And if that's the case, I think the Colts could be a double digit win team and be really good. But week one as a home underdog, I think this will be close enough. Maybe like a 24, 20, 23, 27, like three or four point win by the Colts. Um, and the Texans cover over the touchdown, even if it's 27, 20, like, Give me, give me this, especially if I get that hook, like all day, I'll take the Texans. So um, I think this is an absolute smash and I will, uh, I will lay it with the home team. Yeah. I feel like this is a pretty good play. Um, I, I, I may be in the minority here, but I actually like the Texans offense and the way that they're moving here. I like Damian Pierce. I like David Mills with Brandon cooks, Nico Collins, and then Tyler Johnson. It'll be interesting to see how they integrate him. They have two tight ends that are pretty good. Farrell Brown and Brevin Jordan. And then also the addition of OJ Howard, like, this team could be a little bit better than we saw last year. They knocked the doors off of Jacksonville, surprising everybody last season. So I think if it's definitely feasible to think that they could surprise Indy going into yep. week one. Yep. I think they're, you know, they, they may not be the best team. They may not win many games, but I think they will be more competitive. I think they are building stuff, especially with all these young picks that they're getting. And um, they seem to be doing some okay stuff. Obviously, yeah. Lovey Smith's a terrible coach, so that is a little concerning. Um, but I just need them to keep it within a touchdown. Uh, let's stay in the NFL. We'll go to your second play for the weekend. And you have the San Francisco 49ers heading to Chicago when you're taking the under of 41 and a half. Yeah, it, I feel like this number, uh, I'd probably play this all the way down to like 38 and a half. I know that's extremely low, but they're expecting rain this weekend. You have a Niners offense that's starting Trey Lance. We saw him in bits and pieces last year. I don't know how how good this offense is going to operate. George Kittle is now dealing with an injury that just popped up today, so we yep. don't know if he's playing. That would remove another facet of their offense. And then the Bears, too. I mean, they're transitioning coaching staffs. They're kind of beat up on the offensive and defensive line coming into this season. Roquan Smith missed all of training camp. He's barely practiced coming into this weekend. I feel like both of these teams are going to lean on the run. You may see some big bang plays, but I also think with both of these quarterbacks being extremely young, could be some mistakes down in the red zone. So I'm, I'm happily taking the under at this, especially in week one. Yeah, this number scares me a little bit just because I could see this. We could, be, you know, we're talking in week five and be like, remember when the Niners were like only a touchdown favorite and this was a low scoring game and now they're the, one of the best offenses in the NFL. The Kittle, the Kittle news is a little concerning. Um, I think if I'm betting it, I like a two team tease where I go take the Bears or the Niners down to like, you know, a pick them. And then take the total up to 48, 49. I feel a lot better. I was just going to say, if, this is definitely a spot where I feel like teasing this with like a six point teaser up to the 47 and a half yeah. probably makes a little bit more sense. But in terms of just straight plays, I'm still, I, I still like this number with where both of these teams are at. No. either integrating new coaching staff or a brand new starting quarterback. Yeah. And I think the bears are going to have a, a trouble finding their offense, especially if they're going to try and run it 30 times with Dave Montgomery and, <laughs> Uh, the Niners will shut them down. So yeah, even if this game is 31 to yeah. 10, you still hit the under. So, yeah. um, I, you know, it, it does make some sense. Uh, I am going to stay in the Midwest, and I am going to take an under, and I'm going to take the Iowa Hawkeyes versus Iowa State Cyclones under 41 and a half. The Cyhawk Trophy used to be one of my favorite games to watch. Um, obviously, I like what both teams can potentially do. Uh, but we're talking, did you watch the South we're Dakota talking, State? <laughs> we're talking about an uh, uh, Iowa team that scored seven points on a field goal and two safeties, two safeties. to beat South Dakota State. Um, you know, they, <laughs> I don't know what their plan is on offense. Um, Iowa had it's just know, not it's not good. <laughs> yeah, they're they don't have they threw for a hundred passing yards. Their best running back ran for three yards a carry, 24 carries, 72 yards. Kirk Ferentz wants to sit on the ball, take as much air out of it. Um, I think Iowa State is very much in rebuilding mode, kind of figuring out where they are. I think it's yep. weird that um, um, 
they just they never really took the steps forward. They obviously lost Brock Purdy, they lost Breeze Hall. They lost a lot of pieces. I think this game is going to be ugly, um, like 13 to 10, 9 to 7, something gross. Um, and I think we go way under. So if you can get this 40 or less or, or anything above, like basically yeah. anything about 39, I'd take 39 and a half or higher. Um, and I, you know, I, I think it's an absolute smash. So, uh, both these offenses will have, and like, you could be like, well, Iowa wasn't trying to put anything on tape. Like I, I like, there's lots of teams that don't put anything on tape. And score I don't think they have points. the ability to put anything on yeah. tape. That's the issue. Yeah. It was it was atrocious. Um, luckily, yeah. my eyes weren't bleeding because I didn't have to watch this game. But yeah, um, I think I think this is an absolute smash. So let's go to your next play. Uh, we'll stay in the Midwest yet again, and we'll head to Minnesota, where the Vikings are taking on the Packers uh, over 46 and a half. Talk to me about your thoughts here. Well, I mean, just to start off, I think these two teams have gone over this total in their last four matchups dating back to the last two seasons. Um, yes, Devontae Adams is no longer in Green Bay and, and the Lazard King may not play this week, but Aaron Rodgers is still playing quarterback for the Packers and he owns Minnesota just like he owns every other team in the NFC North or I was going to call it the Norris division like the old days. And then, you know, the Vikings offense, uh, we're expecting some big things here with Kevin O'Connell now as head coach, the old man, Mike Zimmer, trying to pound and ground. That whole system is out, out the window. Justin Jefferson is now the favorite to lead the league in receiving yards. Adam Thielen is just a touchdown machine. Dalvin Cook is fully healthy. Irv Smith is going to be healthy coming into the season. I, like, it, I, I think this is definitely going to be one of those games where you could play this in a pleaser and please this up to about 52 and a half and still take the over. And I'd still feel pretty confident that they could get there knowing that firepower that both of these offenses present. And then with uh, Minnesota's defense is also getting older. So I feel yeah. like even with the worst offense, supposedly of the Packers, they will still have no problems moving the ball against them. Yeah, I guess the, my, so my pushback, I would push back a little bit just because um, I think the Packers, obviously, especially no Alan Lazard, are going to be a lot of Aaron Jones, a lot of AJ Dillon, and it could be a lot more running. Um, and as much as I'm excited about what Kevin O'Connell can be, um, I do worry that maybe he's a little skittish. Zach Taylor was very similar uh, in his initial run with uh, the Bengals, a lot of Joe Mixon early. And then I he realized, like the wait, I have are... awesome receivers. I can really open this thing up and made the offense so much better. So I think over the course of the season, I expect the Vikings to be awesome, but this could be a lot of Dalvin cook and Aaron mm -hmm. Jones and ch back and forth. And, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit lower scoring than we are anticipating. The one thing I will say to refute that is that the difference between the Zach Taylor led Bengals and this Vikings team is the experience level of the quarterback that they're going to be playing with. Yeah. I mean, having Joe Burrow coming into rookie season, like that's a lot more difficult or Andy Dalton, whoever the hell is there. He's not very good. Um, yeah. As opposed to a Kirk cousins, who is a seasoned vet. He's been in this, been with this squad for some time now. Like there's great familiarity with his receivers and just integrating a new offense is not going to be as difficult as it as it was in Cincy with the younger guys no I think that makes sense uh my final play we'll stay on Sunday we'll head to the desert um and where we have the Arizona Cardinals and Kansas City Chiefs I I'm going it. under 53 and a half everyone thinks oh high scoring fast tempo uh the the from from the Cardinals perspective they don't have Hopkins. They aren't going to have Rondell Moore, most likely. They aren't going to have Zach Ertz, most likely. Um, I think this is a big James Conner game. I think Mark, you know, Hollywood is still fine for fantasy. I think Kyler Murray will be good. Um, but I think this will be a slower, low-scoring game. I also think the Chiefs have made some changes and kind of tweaked the offense a little bit with Tyree Kill out of the picture. Uh, and obviously Patrick Mahomes could score 40 points in a quarter and a half and make me look like an absolute idiot for this one. But I think they will be a little more, um, a little more scripted, a little more, uh, you know, methodical down the field. Um, I think sky sky Moore in the running game. I think Kyle, Clyde Edwards, a layer, maybe we get some Rojo season. Um, and then, you know, a, a few more inline blocking uh, tight ends and a little bell dozer on the other side of, of Travis Kelsey. I just think it's close enough. I think they 
both te- I think, you know, we score 48 points here and, um, you know, it stays under by just a few. So, um, I will take the under 53 and a half at Arizona for Arizona versus Kansas city. Yeah, this is, this is another one where I had contemplated actually putting it on my card. Uh, like, like you said, Arizona's kind of beat up on the offensive side of the ball coming into this. So they do not want to get into a boat race with Kansas city, even without Tyree kill. I don't care who's playing receiver again, Patrick Mahomes over supersedes anything as far as what, who's catching the ball for him. And then the chiefs too, like you said, they, they probably want to start looking into keeping these guys a little bit healthier towards the back end of the season. So I think, like you said, they're, they have four, four running backs active, on the roster right now going into Sunday. So maybe that's a, a good sign that they're going to try to run the ball a little bit more this season, or at least use it uh, more frequently than they did in, in the past. So I, I like the call to go under here thinking it's probably going to be, even if you get like a 30 to 17 game or so of that nature, which is yeah. likely considering the chiefs have been steamed up all the way to like a touchdown favorite. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Let's, uh, let's recap our card. Let's give the people the units for each play. Um, and then let's get out of here. So Brian, give them your three bets. Give me your units for each one. Um, and then, uh, we, and then I'll do the same and then we'll get out of here. All right. So we'll work back to front, starting with the Sunday games for the NFL week one, my two picks here, I'm going to be green Bay at Minnesota to go over 46 and a half points. I'm going to go three units on that. I fear fairly com- comfortable going pretty heavy on this game. And then the other NFL game is going to be San Francisco at Chicago to go under 41 and a half. And I'm going to play two units on that with the two young quarterbacks. And for my best bet of the week, we're going to Saturday, Alabama to absolutely destroy Texas because they ain't back. And I'm going to play a full t- five units on Bama minus 20 in this big matchup i like it i like it i'll do the same thing i'll work uh i'll work sunday to saturday um so sunday arizona versus the chiefs under 53 and a half putting two units on that um trying to keep it measured before we get really ramped up i'm sure i'll uh you know get get a get a more aggressive but i do like a lot of the underdogs so i think you know getting a little uh feisty on those could be fun uh, i also have the texans plus seven and a half i'm putting three units on that i think that's just simply too many points 24 20 23 27 something like that makes a lot of sense um and then on saturday iowa iowa state under 41 and a half i'm gonna put three units on that one as well um i just think it's gonna be like nine to four it's going to be weird. It's going to be gross. Um, it's going to be like corner screen, small uh, TV, if it's even on. It's like they. it's yeah. gone so far that I don't even think it's going to be on like one of the big channels anymore, which is which is pretty wild to see. So Brian and I will be back next Wednesday with another recap. Uh, if you are enjoying, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not already following us for NASCAR content. Um, and let us know down in the comments your favorite football bet for the weekend. It could be a prop. It could be an over-under. It could be a side, whatever. I do also want to throw out before we get out of here, Lamar Jackson's rushing prop is 61, 62, depending on where you look, maybe a little bit higher. I think he's going to smash that this week. There, it looks like no J.K. Dobbins. Um, I know it's the Jets, but I could see him breaking off a few big runs and being really valuable this week and kind of adding a little bit. And, um, you know, uh, that game scares me a little bit. But if you are going to bet Baltimore, I think you do alt line and take like minus nine and a half or minus 13 and a half or you know, keep getting more aggressive as, as you Joe see Flacco fit. Revenge, though. Uh, right. Well, I think that's, I think it's either 42 to 10 or Joe Flacco finds a way to beat the Ravens in week one, <laughs> which would be fucking hilarious. So that would be that's, awesome. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. You guys enjoy the slate on the weekend and we'll talk to you next week.